Everyone has a bucket list. It's that collection of coasters that you need to experience before you kick the bucket, or at least get too old to ride. I really, really hope that day never comes. But there are just some things that you have to experience to believe. And through my travels across North America, I've collected a list of 10 coasters that fit the bill. These are the 10 coasters that I think should be on your bucket list. Number 10, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This is no traditional hyper coaster. Its twisted first drop isn't even the biggest one. Its second drop at 228 feet into a ravine is where it hits the max speed of 85 miles per hour. It used to have inversions when it debuted as the Aerodynamics Looper Steel Phantom back in 1991. But Morgan came in and replaced those inversions with injector airtime hills. And the world is better off for it. So why should this be on your bucket list? First, that 228 foot drop into the ravine with Thunderbolt serving as a head chopper is an experience. It's also hard to find a smoother speed machine than this. Major props to Morgan and Kennywood for keeping this glossy smooth. And those airtime hills at the end are absolutely insane. Some of the strongest pops of ejector you'll ever experience. Number nine, Hades 360 at Mount Olympus. On my Hades review, I mentioned that your coaster count is not complete without a ride on this Gravity Group coaster, and I meant it. So it has to make it on this list. So what makes this coaster so different? Let's start with that pre-lift section. That'll toss you out of your seat right off the bat if you're in the back row. And it even has a couple other great airtime moments before it even hits the lift hill. That first drop is solid also, but what comes after is one of a kind. A pitch dark tunnel under the parking lot that's full of twists, turns, and pops of airtime. Not to mention the 90 degree turn. And what happens when you come out of that tunnel? A corkscrew on a wooden coaster. You head back into the tunnel for round two of Twisted Darkness before you head into an airtime filled double down and then a twister finale. It's so unique, so long, has such great forces, and it's something that you won't find anywhere else. Number eight, Coaster at Playland. Going into 2019, this was on my North American bucket list and I was happy to cross it off last August. It was built in 1958, making it by far the oldest coaster on this list. And on the surface, it looks like a typical old wooden coaster, but you have to look closer. First, there's never been a coaster so aggressive that has so little of a restraint. That lap bar comes down and stops about two feet from your legs, and you know you're in for a good time. Especially in the second half of the ride in the front or back, you get some airtime that doesn't feel right with a lap bar that far away from you. You're not going to see coasters that dial up the airtime that much with the equivalent of a buzz bar. You go absolutely flying out of your seat, and that sense of danger makes this a bucket list ride. Number 7. Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds This was another coaster that was on my bucket list, this time from 2018. This CCI coaster from 2000 has won 5 Golden Ticket Awards for the world's best wooden coaster, and I really wanted to know why. For starters, its setting is second to none. It climbs a mountain and spends the entire ride traversing its way along the mountain, winding around it and never really rising off the ground. It's an incredible terrain coaster, which makes for an interesting layout. The coaster bursts out of the mountain to end with a series of airtime hills before hitting the final brakes. Even though the ride experience was rough and kind of disappointing, ride it for the experience and the setting. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. Number six, El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. The Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster is rare enough in the world, and El Toro happens to be the wildest of them all. I'm not sure if there's a coaster that's more aggressive than this anywhere in the world, maybe Skyrush. But even then, I think Toro has it beat. There isn't any coaster out there that has more elite elements than El Toro. It has the best first drop ever, back-to-back -back camelbacks that deliver the strongest, most sustained ejector you'll find anywhere, and then the Rolling Thunder Hill that's considered one of the greatest jolts of ejector of all time. These amazing elements can't be explained. They have to be experienced. So put El Toro on your bucket list. Number five, Cannibal at Lagoon. It's hard to find a coaster that's more visually intimidating than Cannibal. It's got that 200 foot tower and a drop that wraps under itself, 116 degrees, along with a twisted layout full of funky inversions. When you board the train, you see that all you get is a lap bar. The coasters that have a steeper drop like Takabisha and Shellraiser both have shoulder restraints but Cannibal dials up the crazy by just having that lap bar. 
Then there's the elevator lift in that dark tower, which is just terrifying. Then the signature 116 degree drop that actually hangs you there at that angle for a long time as you fall from hyper coaster heights. That first Immelman is elongated with a vertical entrance and exit. It has a double down airtime moment and then the insane Lagoon roll, which packs two slow hang time filled inversions in a row. Lagoon built this themselves and I kind of want them to build coasters for other parks if they can cook stuff up this crazy. Number four, Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. Mock rides really went off the deep end with this. If you told me that there was a coaster that had a vertical drop out of the station and then two launches and a bunch of inversions, I would say that it sounds like a solid ride. But when you add that the cars would be spinning the whole time, it turns Time Traveler into a bucket list experience. Hopefully Mock is able to sell more of these in the future. And they have another one queued up for 2021 at Plopsaland, but with the high price tag, it may be a rare experience for now. Silver Dollar City also did a great job of theming this coaster to time travel, with an amazing cue house and a soundtrack with time-related songs. Not only is it a unique experience, it's an elite experience. Number 3. Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. More specifically, the Magic Seat. I'm usually skeptical about the hype that goes along with certain coasters, but when I went to Cedar Point in 2018, I decided to give the Magic Seat a shot. This is the first car, third row. The magic comes on that final run of airtime hills. These are great no matter where you're sitting because of the triangle shapes of the hills. But the magic seat is out of this world. The airtime is so insanely strong that you go flying into the lap bar and it hurts like crazy. But you're getting ejected so violently that you can forgive the pain for some world-class airtime. If you ride Magnum in the back row, the airtime is still excellent. And I actually prefer the ride experience in the back. But you need to get in that magic seat to see what everyone's talking about because in this case, the hype is real. Number two, The Voyage at Holiday World. This is actually the coaster that inspired this list. The Voyage is a work of art, an epic journey through the woods that seems to defy gravity. Ironically, it was designed by the Gravity Group as their big follow-up to their first coaster that we saw earlier on this list, Hades. The coaster can be divided up into three parts, big hills and drops at the beginning, the spaghetti bowl in the middle, and then the epic return to the station. The Voyage has so much speed coming off those first few big hills that it starts climbing up a hill during the spaghetti bowl section and you don't even realize it. It crawls into the mid-course brake run and picks up all of its speed again with a rare triple down and rips through the return trip to the station. Did I mention the 6,442 feet of track and the most airtime that you'll get on any wooden coaster in the world? That's just the cherry on top of this masterpiece of engineering. It's a lot of people's number one overall coaster and I can see why. The layout is incredible, the setting is top-notch, and it's something you need to experience to appreciate. Number 1. X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. There may be a pair of superior 4th dimension models in Asia built by SNS, but the original aerodynamics version is the only one of its kind that you'll find in North America. Most people aren't going to get to Japan and China, so X2 is what you got, and it deserves to be number 1 on this list for obvious reasons. It has a 215 foot drop, taken backwards and face first on cars hanging off either side of the track. That experience alone is worth the price of admission. Throw in a couple raven turns, one inside and one outside, flipping seats controlled by an extra set of rails, and combining forwards and backwards elements. And I think this is the most unique ride experience in North America. Not to mention how intense it is, topping out at 76 miles per hour while doing all of these acrobatics. It's hard to believe this thing even exists, and it was built almost 20 years ago. X2 is insane, and it should be on everyone's bucket list, unless you've already ridden Aijanaika or Dinoconda. That does it for the list of coasters that I've ridden that I believe should be on your bucket list. This was based on specific experiences that you can't find anywhere else, which is why I left off Steel Vengeance and Fury 325 and other elite rides that are high in my top 10, but don't exactly stand out as one of a kind somehow. Let me know what's on your bucket list and why, and what makes you want to put a coaster on your bucket list. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're not subscribed yet, and you like coasters, please consider doing so and hitting the bell so you don't miss any of this random coaster content. And I'll see you guys all next time.